Welcome back to Fox 51 Today. Daytime sleepiness and narcolepsy affects a lot of folks out there, but there are some ways to try and fix this problem. Dr. R.V. Gouguet joins us this morning to tell us more. Good morning. Good morning, Rachel. Now, you're a sleep specialist. You see a lot of sleeping problems. How common is narcolepsy and what exactly is it? Well, narcolepsy is a condition that causes excessive daytime sleepiness and disruption of sleep at night. Uh, it is estimated that one out of 3,000 Americans suffer from narcolepsy. The main characteristic is really uh, excessive daytime sleepiness. Now, how can this affect a person's day-to-day -day life, having narcolepsy? Narcolepsy starts uh, uh, in some patients very early in life, uh, somewhere in the 15 to 25 years of age. Sometimes you see it in a later age, starting up in the 50s or 60s, but most commonly it's in the young population. It is associated with excessive sleepiness, even in eight and nine-year-old children. And so in school, you find these children suffering from um, uh, uh, proper scores and, and uh, being very successful in their, in their academics because of the sleepiness that causes them to doze off during class. Mm -hmm. And now you mentioned dozing off in class. What are some of the other signs and symptoms that we should look out for for narcolepsy? Uh, besides the daytime sleepiness, they also have disruption in nighttime sleep. It is also associated with what we call as hypnagogic hallucinations. So while they're about to fall asleep, patients may feel like they're dreaming. Mm. Well, now, if we do have narcolepsy, are there any kind of treatments that we can go through or maybe ways that you could help us out? Certainly. We diagnose narcolepsy clinically and with sleep studies. And then once we diagnose the problem, we treat them for their daytime sleepiness and for the disruption of sleep at night. There are medications to help both the circumstances. Now, if we don't get this problem treated, are there some side effects that could happen? I mean, headaches, anything like that? Most commonly, the effect of narcolepsy is to uh, hamper intellectual development, uh, academic performance, uh, work-related performance. People fall asleep at work and uh, they have risk of being fired. Some people uh, do a heavy jobs like uh, uh, working on a uh, tractor or a, uh, or a bulldozer and you know you don't want to be sleepy when you're operating heavy-duty material. No, that could be very, very dangerous. Now if someone's watching this and they think that they might have narcolepsy, what would be your first recommendation for them? The first thing to, uh, to do is to seek help with a sleep physician because without diagnosing the problem, you cannot take medications that are meant for it. And, and now if we were wanting to go get some of these treatments, where can we find that information? Uh, if you go to our website at www.sleeptyler.com, you'll find a lot of information on narcolepsy. All right, well, thank you so much for stopping by this morning. Thank you, Rachel.